Clerks, the comic book. As if we haven't talked about that movie enough, and we won't continue to talk about it in future episodes. So as I said uh, a while back when I was doing the Clerks, the very first, like, Dear Kevin kind of vlog episode, I talked about the movie Clerks. I mentioned I have the comic book, which is uh, written by Kevin Smith and drawn by uh, Phil Hester, Andy Parks, and Jim Mafood. Those are the three authors down at the bottom here. And this particular copy, which I got at a uh, Walden Books back in the, like, Rolling Oaks Mall, is signed by Andy, 2004. And I think that's a real signature. I haven't gotten authenticated. Don't know why there'd be a signed copy of the book. Um, and just, you know, not at a comic book store, just like at an actual chain bookstore. But there we go. If it is signed, good for me. So Phil and Andy went on to work with Kevin again on his Green Arrow run <laughs> uh, for like the first 15 issues, I think, Kevin Smith wrote of uh, the Green Arrow relaunch, which we'll get to at some point. Um, and I, I think they went on to continue to be the artist for that book after Kevin left the title. But um, so that's what we're talking about today, the Clerks comic book, before getting to Jersey Girl. Um, as I said in the last video, there's three stories in here, three issues. Um, they're all standalone. There's, I think there's a couple of references to uh, the other issues, but as far as, you know, it's not like a three-issue story. There are three separate stories here. Uh, one of them's a Christmas story. One of them is a uh, kind of Star Wars-related <laughs> story. Of course it is. And the third one is actually, I almost dropped it. <laughs> the third one's actually a uh, deleted scene, the deleted scene from Clerks, the only deleted scene that never got shot. Uh, if you remember in Clerks, there's that scene where they go to... Um, Oh, she died in the YMCA pool. Julie Dwyer. She goes, they go to Julie Dwyer's funeral, uh, Dante and Randall do. And in the movie, they walk up to the door, and they're kind of playing sad funeral music. And then it cuts to black, and it says five minutes later. And then Dante and Randall haul ass out of the funeral home, and they drive off down the road being chased by angry protesters. And then they have a conversation talking about, like, oh my god, I can't believe you fucking did that. Like, you knocked the casket over, her fucking body fell out, blah, blah, blah. In the original script, um, there was a full scene there. There was actually a scene where Dante and Randall went to a funeral and then shenanigans ensued. So in that issue, that, that story, which is the third uh, issue in this little trade paperback, uh, we actually get to see them uh, do that, whatever, I won't spoil it for you, but what, what happens in the uh, mortuary home, it's pretty funny. Um, later on, that same scene will be animated and put on the Clerks X DVD. And I'll probably cover that at some point too. I'll probably be doing a whole bunch of videos about the Clerk X, Clerks X DVD. So um, that issue uh, is called Tales from the Quick. That's the deleted scene, the Julie Dwyer's funeral scene. Um, that one is actually hosted by Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, they're actually hanging out in a basement somewhere doing, you know, they've got, they've got the deleted scene. So those guys are hosting the movie. The other two issues are more, you know, they're not framed by anything. They're just, you know, clerks as a comic book. And uh, they have the same art style. Uh, the third one's got a slightly different art style, different artistry, that one. But here we go. <laughs> There's the cover. Um, the first two issues. So, the first issue, I believe, is the Christmas one. I could be super wrong about that. <laughs> check out Kevin Smith. Check out, check out Dear Kevin, this video series where a dude reads comic books to himself quietly. Okay. <laughs> so, the first issue is, uh, is actually the Buy Me Toys Star Wars thing. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, um, an issue about... Randall discovering that there's a bunch of, like, there's a huge market for Star Wars toys. And they kind of do this weird, like, you know, drug mule, episode, you know, storyline or, um, you know, drug trafficking behind the scenes kind of, you know, they turn Star Wars toys into, like, the hunt for heroin or meth, something like that. So it involves Randall trying to uh, get his hands on, like, the rarest Star Wars toys, you know, Han on Tauntaun kind of thing. So they can sell them at a marked up price at the, uh, at the quick stop. All based on a true story, uh, because Walt Flanagan from, from Comic Book Men used to do that kind of shit all the time. If you listen to one of the Smodcasts, I can't remember which one, um, one of the Smodcasts that Walt's a guest on, they tell lots of stories about the, the early days of selling shit out of the secret stash that really was technically illegal, you know, uh, reselling Star Wars toys, going to Toys R Us to buy a Star Wars toy for like eight ninety five, and then immediately bringing it back to the secret stash and selling it for like 34 bucks, that kind of stuff. So that's the first issue. The second issue is a Christmas story, which has got my favorite uh, image from Clerks, um, the comic book, and maybe from the movies. It just sums up exactly what it's like to work at a job like this. And having, you know, having worked in a job like this for a little over a year now at a convenience store, I can say it with such honesty. So it's Christmas Eve. Um, Dante is at the convenience store by himself, and we get a two-page two, uh, two splash of uh, Dante by himself. Look at that, man. Just sad sitting there watching Charlie Brown by himself and just a big old quiet sigh. That is what life is like when you work at a fucking convenience store. Um, this issue, like I said, the Christmas issue, and uh, Dante and Randall had made a bet when they were kids about 
Uh, Brandle had gotten a Motley Crue jacket, <laughs> like a denim jacket with an album painted on the back, when he was in like fifth grade. And they made a bet saying like, I bet you in 10, I bet you're gonna forget about that thing in five minutes, throw it away. And Randall said, no, -uh, I'll bet you a hundred dollars I'll still be wearing this in 20 years. And Dante remembered. So the idea is that come Christmas day tomorrow, if Randall doesn't still have that Motley Crue jacket that he's gonna have to pay Dante like a thousand bucks or something like that, or you know, whatever. So that's sort of the plot going on. But really it's also this very sweet story about Dante going to visit Caitlin Bree, who's catatonic in the hospital. It's the first time that he's, uh, thought about seeing her <laughs> since the events of Clerks. Caitlin Bree, for those who don't know, is the girl who fucked the dead guy in the bathroom and uh, was driven off in an ambulance at the end. So there's this interesting, very sweet, sad follow-up and then eventually very fucked up follow-up to uh, Clerks in that way. And Randall's off having his own adventure because it turns out that in between the quick stop and RST stores is a third door that neither of them ever noticed before. It's a little apartment, and Santa works in that store. They run, you know, Dante runs, Dante runs with some elves. You know, Santa is, you know, working there. It's because it's cheaper than the rent at the North Pole, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a pretty cool comic. It's full of lots of filthy, funny stuff, lots and lots of dialogue, um, gorgeous black and white art, lots of great shadows and the paneling, and it's just a really cool comic book. If you like Clerks, obviously you're gonna love the comic. But also, if you're just a fan of like indie comics in, in general, uh, back in the 90s, I don't know so much anymore, but back in the 90s, indie comics were kind of becoming a big deal. Stuff like uh, Strangers in Paradise, which was also black and white, and a bunch of, you know, kind of smaller, uh, lesser known, not superhero comics were kind of happening around that time. So Kevin decided to get in the game and do his version of it. And um, I want to say these came out at the, at the end of the 90s, maybe early thousands, but um, that was his first foray into comic books. And he would go back many times to write for Superman, Superman, well, sort of, Superman's in one of his stories, but he would go back to write books for uh, DC and Marvel. He's written some Spider-Man stuff, he's written some Daredevil stuff, and then on the DC side, he's written for Batman and Green Arrow. So, that's the Clerks comic book, that's this episode. Um, I, you know, I'm done with work for the week, that's why I'm probably a little bit frazzled and all over the place. Um, just finished my seven day a week, so I got two days off. I'll be going to sleep. You know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go literally just gonna smoke a cigarette and watch Angels in America. <laughs> but um, after that, I'm gonna go to sleep, and then tomorrow I've got that job interview, and then I'm gonna record, you know, as many videos as I can so that I can sound more coherent and have fun, and, you know, I'll be able to keep posting them for you throughout the week. Hope you guys are enjoying the show, and uh, next time I'll be talking about um, one of my screenplays again. I'll be talking about an animated film I wrote called Almost Pets. So, <laughs> hope you're excited for that, and, uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the Clerks comic book. You can probably find it online. You can find it at a used bookstore, used DVD store, maybe. <laughs> and uh, that's all for now. Oh, wait, shit, I forgot. I got to do a Dear Kevin, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Dear Kevin, I love the Clerks comic book. And later on when you did a Clerks, another Clerks comic book for um, uh, Clerks 2, you did a little kind of prequel story showing how Dante and Randall get to the... Uh, the movies after the quick stop burns down. I love that you tie your movies together. I also love Chasing Dogma, another movie I'll be getting to at some point, a comic I'll be getting to at some point that bridges the gap between uh, uh, Chasing Amy and Dogma. I think that's about it. I just recently you did a Yoga Hosers comic, I heard, uh, read about it on Twitter. But um, I love that you do that. And um, for the longest time, you threatened of doing a Mallrats 2 in the comics, which I thought was a good idea. But instead, you're doing Mallrats for real, you know, as a movie, so awesome. Um, this Dear Kevin is going to be very selfish, sir, just as a fan. Um, you hinted at one time or another that, you know, you do sort of have an idea for a second Dogma movie and that it would involve uh, Bethany's kid, the last Zion, the new last Zion, and that, you know, maybe Alanis Morissette would play it and uh, it would be about the end of the world, be about the apocalypse, and that you would never make that movie because if you got death threats on the first one, you would definitely get death threats on an apocalyptic movie, particularly because you said there'd be no way to write it without mentioning, um, you know, Islam. Um, and other religions as well. Um, so, <laughs> I kind of agree with you. Maybe don't make that movie. It seems a little dangerous. Um, and don't make it, like, half-assed. Like, if you know, if you go watch um, the Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg movie, um, This is the End. And that's what it's called. The one about the fucking end of the world where the devil rapes Jonah Hill. That's a really fun, funny movie, but, like, it's not going for anything deep. I mean, friendship, yes, but not going for deep, you know, religious-wise or theological wise. So if you're going to do a Dogma 2, please don't, you know, kind of pussy out and do it just for the jokes. If you're going to do a Dogma 2, it should mention Islam. It should be covering heavier things. It should be a spiritual sequel, pun intended, to the first one. Um, so please don't make that as a movie because I really don't want any more death threats. But absolutely, you should write that as a comic book, man. That'd be fantastic. The clout you have in the comic book industry now, the artists you can get, you know, the artists you can get on board, 
you know, the, the amount of advertising that can be put into something like that, um, I think it'd be fucking fantastic to see. I just want to know what the fuck, you know, ever since you mentioned that you've had an idea for Dogma 2, I ha I'm curious what the fuck that is, because of all your movies, that's the one I feel like is kind of over. Like, when that movie ends, you know, big crane up and the score kicks in and you get the opening, you get the closing credits. I wasn't, I was like, what happens next? I was like, no, that's a big epic story, well told, and I'm done. I don't need, I never thought about what happens next um, with those characters or, you know, with The Last Sign or with, you know, God or anything else. So the fact that you have an idea is really fucking intriguing to me. So please uh, do what you did originally with the Clerks comic book, and please, please do, um, you know, Dogma 2, Electric Boogaloo, in the comic books. I would very much like that. So if you, if you have any interest at all, write it to all the comic book friends and uh, do it, man. I want to read it. Sincerely, George. So that's it for this week. Once again, a very rambly video. That seems to be a common theme with my videos lately, is me apologizing for being rambly. Um, next time I said I'll be talking about one of my screenplays, uh, Almost Pets, and then I'll be getting into Jersey Girl. So thank you again for watching. I hope you're enjoying me. Share them with your friends. Like and share. Subscribe. All the YouTube stuff. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow with uh, Almost Pets. Thanks for watching.